guys. First mat of the day, making our way over towards Aaron Gill, the old tried and true. So let's see, where is our plane path gonna be taking us? It's a pretty standard one. It's a little more towards the west, but honestly, you really shouldn't be complaining at this point. Ghosts and Rumblers who go to the Milta Peninsula, like, I don't know, you could see Ghosts go to Zarki. We've seen more teams this phase have um, flexible drops. Yeah. We, it's still a minority in that aspect, but more than previously. But in this plane path, I don't think we're going to see too much deviation. Who would have thought? Tempo Store making their way over towards Gatka. This is kind of their tried and true. It's been their home for quite a while now. Got the lampshade. You'd think that the lampshades would fly off whenever you're doing the dive at this point. Yeah, like actually, the they wouldn't fly off. The wind would just rip through the fabric. But it's gotta be really uncomfortable to like nosedive in. It's gonna be uncomfortable to wear. I don't. I mean, they're obviously making a fashion statement. What you don't think that everybody wearing the lampshades in yellow is enough of a fashion statement? I think they can go more. Take it to the next level. Yeah, they can go bigger. Cam is challenging you players. They can go bigger. We want more than just the yellow. <laughs> but, uh, we often see this being asked quite a bit. Why does everybody wear yellow whenever they're playing on the competitive stage? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to cut you off. Look right below Wooly right now. That is it. Obviously, it's green grass, but it is quite yellow down, yeah. down on the grass there. And also because everyone is so used to looking for a black silhouette, I've heard experience from a lot of players saying that either, either on, on one end or the other being hiding in yellow or searching for someone who's wearing yellow that it's just harder to spot than someone who's in regular clothing on Erangel specifically on Miramar as well mm -hmm. obviously it's so it's a little bit of a it's actually a lot of bit of camouflage which is the reason why a lot of teams are doing it so we got the first circle that has popped it's going to be dead center on Yaznaya a couple of teams had to make modifications based off of their drops, kind of rewarded off of this. We got Rumblers way up towards the And north. Ghosts. So I was actually corrected. Both of those squads on the Milta Peninsula did flex their drop because of how important it is to get looted up and to start rotating. We've seen the um, speed of this game of NPL speed up 30 seconds a minute every single phase. Well, what's interesting right now is Lazarus. They're running a very big split. They have two members that are in Yasnaya right now. There's that building complex that's just to the north of the lake yeah. next to Yasnaya. They've got one member over there. And then they've got Uncivil that's making the cross from quite a ways away. I want to say he was about a kilometer and a half away from the rest of his team just to secure a vehicle. Yeah, well, it's not just for a vehicle. They didn't know where the first circle was going to be. And so we've seen Lazarus in previous games and previous rounds really like the idea of sending one player out early. Granted, that has gotten punished. We did see Pretty Curdy get killed from that exact same scenario just the other day by Wildcard, uh, just yesterday. But they still want, like that idea of even if the rest of the squad is using up the full four and a half, five minutes of loot, they can send one guy out very, very early to establish a point to rotate around and rotate through. And so Siv, he was there on the west side away from Yasnaya just in case the circle went northwest or even just more towards the west. And granted, it went to the northeast, and so he's just falling back. But now they have Pretty Curdy up in No Lean just above them. I love the fact that it's still called No Lean, by the way. Yeah, that's classic. But it's I, it's, it's an old school throwback to PUBG. What else do you call it? Day. I mean, that, that one building, that's no fun. So right. we, uh, you were talking about a second ago, Sonic's already on the move. We're seeing a lot of the teams that are towards the top of the leaderboard are very quick in their rotation. So Sonic's already has a place that they're wanting to try to capitalize off of. It's going to be making their way pretty close right over towards Lazarus. So that could end up being a very dangerous mm. rotation point as we're going to have Sonic's. E-United and Lazarus all in a similar position on that. Pretty yeah. centered in the circle. Sonics should be aware that Lazarus and E-United, E-United especially going to be around this area. E-United could be a little bit more of a question because, well, not anymore. Bill Frost already let out a couple of shots, which is smart because you don't want to let them to get you don't want to let them get too close. You want to basically deter them from taking this fight. Now, Sonics, we've seen them make aggressive maneuvers. And in fact, yeah, they're actually going to pull up on that. They yeah. recognize that it was only one player. They said, we can easily take this fight. Bill Frost recognized that play. And so he's going to be on the retreat. He took the shots, trying to scare them away. They listened in, realized it was only one gun. So therefore, yeah. pulled off the side of it. And you can see still kind of aggressing up there, being very careful on it. They heard the vehicle leave. Bill Frost is going to go ahead and regroup and yeah. back down towards the southern part of the circle is going to be where E United probably posts up. So Sonics with a little bit of aggressive, um, I guess, movement does pay off as now they're going to get heavy. Well, because the Sonics loot up around school, which is not outside the zone, but it's close towards the edge. And one of the worst things that can happen is to say, hey, we're kind of in the zone. We can take our extra time. And then you see more and more vehicle convoys go by. Wait, are those, are they from, oh, is, are those guys from Quarry? Is that from Sosnofka Island? Oh, I guess we, we lost our position in the circle because we didn't take advantage of the fact that we were closer.
one outlier team to the, hey, let's move early and get into circle strategy is going to be Tempo Storm. Never in a rush. It's nah. also part of their looting strategy and how the they handle stuff. They, they take their time. They make sure they get all their meds, but they're, they're not afraid, afraid to taking a little bit of blue damage inside of the first and second circle yep. and let everybody kind of rush for those prime positions because they have faith in their firepower and they can get into a position if they need to later. Yeah, so phase one and phase two Tempo Storm were absolutely very, very strong when they were in a sort of uh, a flexible position that they can move around in, generally not oh, pop in the center. That's in a little bit of trouble as Genesis looking back over that direction. Got vehicles posted up, but you can see a lot of damage going back over towards him. It's a full firing squad coming back down towards Genesis. Pat is going to be in a world of hurt. Nowhere really to go. The rest of the team's kind of separated out. Pride's off to the east on this. And yeah, really, nobody from Envy is going to be able to provide too much support. But I guess a couple of shots coming out is going to force them to go ahead and say, OK, it's vulnerable location. Let's just play this safe. And I'm kind of curious, is it the early game woes that Genesis was facing yesterday coming back at this point and making a pull off of this? It's also just not worth it for Genesis. That was not a position that they would want to just hunker down in and commit to. So they tried to get a little bit of damage on a pad caps, maybe pop, pop a couple of tires, which they have. Pad caps is not driving a fully healthy vehicle, but they don't want to stay there because that's just going to be a complete waste of the early game. Besides, the rest of Envy were coming up behind them. If they did commit, then they could have easily been a uh, pinched in between, but look, Alo, he may have an angle on the SSG. Taking a couple of shots over towards Valley, he pulls away from the rest of the team, trying to draw as much aggro as he can. They do manage to survive, but look, Space Station Gaming is kind of you turning this back around onto it. I think they've realized it's just Alo inside this position. The rest of the Lazarus are kind of playing back down this hillside. Alo realizes he's in a vulnerable spot, so retreating back, make sure he has yeah. firing lines with the rest of his team. Yeah, once again, seeing Valier pull off, I thought that was a mistake at first, but he actually pulled in a position to counter this. Again, he had backup, Alo didn't, so Alo had to retreat. I mean, it's one of those situations, whenever you realize, hey, it's just one guy, played a little bit more aggressive. That's two times now we've seen people capitalize on not allowing somebody, a solo player, to bully them and yeah. force a rotation. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Lazarus would want to stay there. I think they are just out in this field to put pressure around them. And he's going to wait for circle number two, and they're going to be putting pressure on a second member of low key. They already lost one in packs, and Chubba Bubba, 11 HP, just barely able to make it inside hard cover. But his teammates are nowhere to be seen. Rotation woes are starting to be a little bit of a problem as everybody's trying to condense around Yasnaya. So that's opening up a lot of firing lines, sight lines galore as these diamonds are kind of playing across fields. Nobody's opting into Yasnaya because naturally it's a yeah. very difficult location to get out of. And those fields are also eating up a good section of the circle as well as Star well, Stalver Mountain. Low key are actually committing to Yasnaya, it seems, but that's just because they have nowhere else to go. They, they split up from each other. They already lost a player. Uh, and for a team that's on the bottom of the leaderboard, this is not a good start to the fourth day. Rumblers looking back up towards Space Station Gaming. A lot of people playing along this hillside, which is very interesting to have to rotate through because there's very, I guess, differentiated paths. You have to make specific choices on how you want to climb up this mountain, especially yeah. in pro play, because there's so many beautiful sight lines from the buildings back behind and these little plateaus that people can play on and kind of look back down. Ooh, Hedgehog taking a fair number of shots from Vanquish. Already dropped down to 10 HP. He's going to be able to prone, but still, that's another med used. That's actually his only first aid kit. Uh, at this point, it's also going to be very difficult to get any form of, like, replenishment of meds, armor, yeah. helmets, just because whenever you're playing and Stalber is eating up so much of that mountainside, we actually saw a lot of teams loot along these locations, so there's not going to be a lot of resources left on the ground yeah. on this part of the map. Rumblers here. Just doing their rumbler thing. They came down from Kameshki. We saw them perhaps in a position to aggress onto Space Station Gaming, but pushing uphill isn't very smart. And besides, the first circle is literally 10 seconds from closing. So at this point, take some shots if you have the sight lines, but wait for the second circle. Get ready to be in your vehicles or already be in your vehicles to pull off and make a split decision for circle number two. It's a big factor inside of the first game. Oh, and here hey. we go. Let's go ahead and make this spicy for game number one. Ghost Gaming, these guys are... They're, they're so happy right now. They've got a circle yeah. they can, where they can play this. Everybody back down to the south. Look at them jumping in vehicles. They're like, damn it, we have got to figure out how we're going to handle this. Rumbler's already making a move as well. So big exit is coming out from so many different teams. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. We might see a couple of pot shots back and forth on the driving, but it's going to be the teams that are already posted up along the hillsides that are going to be raining down damage on these guys in rotation. Pat Caps has not had a great game so far. But oh, Envy and Zenith are trading back and forth, but elsewhere. They're Zero. actually trading on vehicles, going for the shots on the side of that, trying to connect with it. Zenith is in a lot of trouble right now. Taro's already making a play off to the side of it. Pride's off to the side as well. Taro's taking a lot of damage, but Patron goes down inside of that exchange. Zenith in a lot of trouble already.
Yeah, they actually had the opening knock and finish onto pad caps, but this is just rough for everyone. Everyone had to push north. There's not a lot of places to hold in this circle. And E United, they're getting into it as well. Moody's going to be able to loot up. The rest of Zenith are out of here, but still, this is not a good start. Granted, for either team, because Envy still have to find their way into the circle, but at least they have a couple of points to coast on. Space Station Gaming was already set up in, in location. E United started making the push up towards them. They lose a member off of that. You can see Luke in a little bit of trouble. This is the, the problem whenever you don't mind coming in late. Whenever you get a circle like this, you really do mind coming in late. As it is, wild card that's just raining down damage. Well, I say that. Finally going to go ahead and connect with one of those tires and now just having to abandon the vehicle somehow still alive. But VZ's also making a similar approach. Maluk's got to use the utilities, got to throw out a couple of smokes. VZ actually stops on this, bro. I don't that know if you're going to like that. That was very ambitious by Riot Squad, and this is what we love about them, but it's also what they get punished for doing. But I love this oh, by Wildcard. We got Tempo Storm that's actually going to make a push back over here. It looks like they're trying to pick up Maluk. Shark Shot's off to the side of this. Does have an angle. You see, VZ does go down to Sharky. Can they make it back over here towards Maluk? There was a little bit of utility on, but that smoke's probably already going to be going. Vehicle's going to come up and block it out. This is all based off of Sharky holding down this angle. Maluk's just trying to play off of it. Look where the Dossie is even positioned, but Protégé wants to join this as well. This is a rough play by Wired Squad. You might just want to cut your costs and lead. But at this point... Uh, they're committed. Let's see if it works out for them. Zampo, he's not even oh, alive from a loop. Look at he's this. going on the aggressive Step push. Up. Trying to go for this, getting the damage off on it. Gonna move back down, going for the res. Still has that back protection onto it, but I mean, that's two different squads firing down at Riot Squad. That's two members down and out. The, it looks like we got somebody off in the distance that's just gonna go ahead and regroup at the wall building. The thing is about Tempo Storm, even if they are able to get the revive on the Maluk, where are they gonna go? The, the smoke is dissipating and Pentalo is already back in on the shots through that smoke. I, I think the Dossi is still fine though. I think it's parked back behind Ooh. that UAZ. I don't think it's lost any tires. It's a risky play. They might just want to push into the building that ru the remaining players Riot Squad are holding, but that's going to be a rough one as well. I mean, it's Tempo Storm. If anyone can do it, it's them. But look at look at the kill feed. Pistola is knocking and dropping everyone. That's going to be the second down for Maluk. He's going to bleed out very quickly and also damage armored helmets. This is going to be really bad for them. And we're the still trying to get it, but there's just no utility to work with. Finally, Maluk does go down. Now, Zampa, you made the commit over there trying to get your boy up. What do you do? And I think that was the dossier exploding back behind yeah. it. Finally going down as well. Yeah, this is... I love this by Wildcard. They saw in this area of the map, it's so wide open, so few places to play, and they recognize that, say, hey, let's post up in not a safe spot. Let's go to a spot that we have sight lines and we punish everyone, and they've done just that. But over here, Genesis and E United are getting involved. E United taking a couple of licks against them, down two players. E United and Genesis in a little bit of a fight. Genesis did have one of their members go down, but they're going to be able to get the res off on that. But E United did lose two inside of that. <laughs> Genesis is right across the wall. Got to be very careful on rotations, but I think it's finally started to calm down. A lot of these teams are now playing yeah. along the edges that they wanted to. Genesis opted into going all the way around next to Kameshki and is actually using that push up the hillside that I would say is probably one of the least populated points inside the map, but they have to be very cautious with United still trying to move and trying yeah. to get the high ground. Even with a weakened United, half the players are dead. They still have the high ground above Genesis became mine. Spotting them out, wants to put even more pressure on them. Good couple of shots is gonna loosen up the entrance. And E United might just want to take that as a sign that they just need to go hide and stall. But we did see this the third phase. A lot of the shooting stopped because everyone had finally made it in right before the phase closed. And it was gonna center up. Still a fair bit of stalver or all of stalver in play on the northeast side, but a lot of low ground as well. We do have a couple of teams making moves. As you can see, Envy trying to make their way up the hillside. It's going to be Vanquish that's up on the top of it. That's looking back down. Not the cleanest of sight lines towards Envy, and they're using that. They're capitalizing by bouncing between these little rock points, and Sharky's going to draw it right by a wild card. That's a lot of damage, and oh, there we go. That's another two down and out for Tempo Storm. Does that just leave Zampa as yeah. the last guy inside the dip alive? I am surprised that Zampa is not actually dead yet, but you can see wild card shooting at him. It's, it's not going to be long. This is a uh, Tempo Storm uh, again. Masters well, of anticipation and theatrics. They are putting on a show and thinking that they're going to make it easy. They tried to push up to the side of it to provide a little bit of cover, really draw the attention away from Wildcard so maybe Zampa could get away. Uh, they did draw the attention that they were looking for, I think, just a little bit a little they bit wanted. too much if that was the plan. I think they were also just trying to get into the circle because, well, that thing's closing. They still need a position to hold down, and the side of Stalber Mountain that is in play 
It's basically, we saw this, we already saw this in space. It's basically a big giant rock face. Zampa's taking this fight, and I like this. But it's really his only option, but this is Zampa. going for it, yeah. This is just what Zampa does. Zampa doing Zampa things. You don't shoot at Zampa and expect Zampa not to want to take the shots back. He's right still not outside, he's right outside the circle, still yeah. got about what, maybe 100 meters that he has to cross. And this is gonna be pretty rough. There's a little bit of a dip that he can maybe use to get a, a little bit of sightline relief, but uh, Riot Squad, and with their last two members, always already making their way inside the circle as well. We got Player One Esports next to him. So they started Southwest and Riot Squad ended up Northeast. I'm assuming Player One heard that bike, or at least D-Treats did and called it out to the rest of his teammates. And yeah, you can see them already looking at this direction. I like the path that Mystery is taking, mm -hmm. taking the sneaky path up, and they're just barely inside the circle when it closes, but uh, they're going to have to, one, realize that player one is okay. in that area. But let's talk about this circle. We already saw a hard shift northwest. It's a hard shift back southeast. Throw a crate inside the middle of it, and it's going to get violent real quick. Dietrich does line up, gets some shots over towards Leda. Mystery goes down as well, and Riot Squad is eliminated first. So... Just to the south of Stalber is going to be where our safe zone is at. Player One Esports, Rumblers, Ghost Gaming, Wildcard. It's going to be also Sonics and a couple of members of Lazarus, as well as our boy Zampa. Going to also have to make the cross. Well, I say Zampa, but another team, at the <laughs> another team at the top uh, that's in a little bit of a struggle is going to be Sonics. They still have four up, zero kills. And you can see that they're on foot, which is the play to make when you're trying to climb up this mountain. The horsepower on the vehicles isn't the greatest going uphill, and a slow-moving target is obviously a lot more dangerous than a fast-moving target. And so they're going to go on foot, hope to stay silent. You already saw Endemic. They're controlling their edge. Relo's actually looking up. It spots them out. This is one of my favorite circles to watch in competitive PUBG to see how teams try to move through this in the strategies because you have to be paying attention to all these different angles. Relo going with a little a couple of pop shots up there and trying to be a little fancy with it be, as well as trying to maintain some safety. But uh, going back to how you have to make so many decisions and how you want to path up this, especially with 47 people alive, it's going to make it very hazardous and you have to be extremely cautious on how you make any form of approach. There's a lot of fighting happening on the north side, which is unsurprising. Not even Endemic versus Sonics. Relo here is still trying to spot it out, but Endemic aren't committing onto this because it's still not the stage in the game that they have a strong position. They are just on the edge. And so they can give a little damage to the Sonics, and that's fine. But you don't want to overcommit onto it and end up losing your position in the circle because it's not even a position. It's a lot of pot shots right now. Nobody committing to any firm pushes. Everybody feels like they're just trying to measure out what's going on to this. We talked yeah. a lot about how Sanok and how you have to play on Sanok. Really, this part of the map can play like that with the amount of yeah. players that we have out right, alive right now. You have to assume people are behind every single rock. Yeah, there's so many rocks, a lot of tree cover, there's a lot of forest cover. Jaysank, though, trying to give it a ghost, but he takes them in return down to 12 HP, has to prone down, but Ghost retreating from Space Station right into the crosshairs. Oh, oh wild there card. And there we go. Adam drops McCoy. How are Ghost going to adjust? Or wild are they? Card. Wild card already at five kills right now. They got in that skirmish with Tempo Storm a second ago. Wild card throws out a couple of smokes. Looks like Ghost is just oh, going to leave McCoy. McCoy behind. Yeah, they I have think to. He's taking a couple of shots as well. So making their way up. Now Ghost is going to be positioned right up next to E United and going to have Wild card repositioning back behind them. Ghost could still punish Wildcard heavily for this, but they are not inside the circle. They're just on the edge, and so they're gonna, they're gonna wanna make this fight go quickly. And that, of course, is honestly onto Wildcard to see how fast they wanna push up or if they wanna take it slow and make it really obnoxious for Ghost. Sonics are also here with their sightlines looking on Wildcard. Trimsy's taking a couple of shots, lands a couple on the head. Drops Penta down to about half HP or less. Wildcard was doing this to Tempo Storm a second ago. Stayed for it, trying to get those kills, but now they're on the receiving end as Ghost has managed to get into the position. Sonic's looking back down, but the whole time this is going on, notice Space Station Gaming is listening to every single fight. Yeah, see them on the mini map there. They're trying to figure out where everyone is at, and they've actually made a full defensive line on anybody that's going to have to kind of crest along that hillside. So that's going to be very dangerous depending on how we see rotations come through. Ooh, blue is soaking Wildcard, but they still can't move because Ghosts are in the way. Shrimsy needs to back off unless he wants to take too much damage from the blue himself, and he's going to do just that. We do see the next circle shift. It's a medium shift southeast, and you can see how wide open it is on that shallow slope going down to Yasnaya. This is going to be a very interesting circle very quickly because we're losing a lot of those terrain points. It's just over east to where that warehouse is. Vegas showing up. That is needed right there. Going to go ahead and take a couple more shots, but look, the longer this is staying on, E-United is starting to make the push off on their east side. 
Ghost has a couple of smokes down. I don't know if they're gonna see this, and you can see. Now a couple of shots going through. Wildcard finally eliminated, but at what price? They've drawn a lot of aggro back their direction. Ooh, I mean, Ghost haven't gotten a drop on them from EU United, but Sonic's pushing as well. A nade from Taylor J is gonna drop Drassel, and this is a tricky situation for the boys in black. Ghost is in a lot of trouble. Two different teams are on the hunt for them, right on the edge of the circle. EU United looks like they're pulling away from it. They don't want to commit. Sonic's is still just kind of waiting off the angle. Now we're gonna have to see, how does Ghost move through this? Shrimzy and, oh, there we go, Shrimzy gets spotted out. Now it's just Vegas, and Vegas realizes, okay, it's too many teams, I have got to go. I get why EU United backed off. They only had two players. They didn't want to commit because they weren't in the circle just yet, but the Sonics utilized what they just, what EU United just did to punish Ghost even further, and, Go and Vegas is running, but I don't know what he can do. Tony Sonics v take a lot of damage, though, from Envy and Endemic. Yeah, Tony V goes down to the side of that. Endemic was waiting for this as well. Everybody's kind of post up traps. Vegas gets spotted out. He goes down. That's going to be Ghost Gaming going out in 12. Tickleton looks back over towards Endemic, lines up, gets some more damage over towards him. Endemic did have a nice little line to make their way back in the safe zone, but those shots they took drew attention. Taylor J walking over on the other side of this. It is just third party on third party right now. Sonics certainly knew that United were above them, but you need to hedge your bets and take your shots, choose your angles, and unfortunately, United pushed onto them. So now it's just Keenan, Keenan up. He's going to be crawling. crawling. Let's see if United's going to wait on this. They know that they've got to move. They spot him out. There you go. Sonics does go down. Endemic still up and in front of them. So they've got to be very cautious in how they make the approach. Up to three kills at this point. Nine teams alive. So now a slow and steady pace is how you can see United's going to move into this. They have Space Station Gaming off to one side. Endemic that they've already drawn the aggro from. And here comes Space Station Gaming taking a couple of shots. They see Taylor J. He's going to go down. Bill Frost is already really low on life, but they're going to opt into the flush instead. Dead. Now we've got Endemic. They're very aware that somebody else is waiting for them along the same line. The Hunter becomes the Hunt, and he's going to get dropped by a nade by Bahawaka, but SSG are not out of it just yet. They have Endemic now pushing up the hill onto them, and two down for SSG now with a nice bolt-action shot by Wolf. Endemic is pushing up into this. They know they have the numbers advantage. They're trying to crest up on the hillside, but it's going to be a third party coming up from Vanquish as well, taking a couple of shots. Lazarus does end up with the circle as well as Vanquish, but it's this fight up towards the north where we've got Rumbler, Space Station Gaming, and Endemic all looking back with Lazarus having sight lines. Relo now making the push slowly and steadily back over towards Space Station Gaming, but that hillside is providing some form of cover. Uh, you can see why Endemic are tentative pushing up on SSG. Surely they know the damage that SSG have taken because of the kill feed, but the sight lines down that hill for all the other teams that Vanquish and Lazarus mean that they essentially can't push freely. And this gives an opportunity for SSG to get a couple of revives, but here are the Rumblers trying to put some pressure onto them themselves don't have a lot of time to work with. Rumblers have kind of stalled out on this. They're looking for it. They really wanted to catch something out of the Space Station Gaming. Very aware that they're in a pincered position, trying to figure out how they're gonna react to this, because Lazarus still has sight lines on them as well. Rumblers finally opting into the push. Baja takes a lot of damage, has to drop back into cover, but Waldo's right up in his face, bouncing from rock. Finally, he does go down. Looking back at the last members for Space Station Gaming, you can see Hetro's trying to go for the peak. He's got the blue back behind him. This is gonna tick for a lot of damage. Ox into stalling it out, trying to buy some more time on this, maybe seeing if Everybody plays around the other side of this wall. Maybe he can get something out of it, but Rumblers just doesn't care. They're still pushing four man up, and that's going to be Space Station Gaming going down. If there was only two Rumblers players, maybe uh, Hedgehog could have gotten something there from that angle. But unfortunately, Rumblers, I mean, this is how they All play. Run. They keep the four up until the late game and then suddenly go loud, and they're, it's working out for them so far. Rumblers has to be very cautious. They've got so many teams that are looking back towards them. Lazarus still holding angle. You can see Vanquish looking back over onto this as well. Wolf was trying to cross back down in front of them. Pretty close, just on the other side of that rock, but he's kind of trapped at this point. Vanquish has to figure out how they're going to play this, and you can finally see the sight line coming up from Lazarus. They were just watching everything that was happening up on that hill and just taking pot shots at anything they wanted. Ever since the circle shifted away from Lazarus, they said, you know what, we're not going to opt into this sort of traffic, this race to the center of the next one. We're going to play on the edge, and it's worked out in their favor. I don't know what their kill count is, but they have a strong position in the circle right now, and they're getting a couple of kills still. And Demic are annihilated by Vanquish, a team that certainly needs to come loud. They already have six kills, but they're in a world of hurt themselves. Pride is going to drop Tetra. Beautiful angles coming out from Envy. They just crept on the side of that hill. Got sight lines back up towards it, taking a couple of pot shots. Rumbler still playing way back over on that edge on the circle. They are inside the safe zone, but Lazarus starting to take more and more control over the circle right now. They have to be very cautious as Taro does get a sight line over towards Alo, gets a knock onto him, but that should be a pretty easy res. You can see this is kind of the cluster of players right now. They're trying to contend with the rest of the circle. We've got Rumblers on the edge. These guys we're looking at now. And then really it's Lazarus that's got everything else. 
Yeah, more or less. And you pointed out how the sight lines are quite open onto Lazarus. But considering this circle, they still have the best position. And especially yeah. that Envy, who are the ones that had that sight line, are going to have to deal with Vanquish and Zenith. And now that the circle is going to center up once again, they're going to have to deal with them before pushing into the circle themselves. I don't even know how much cover, th cover there is available in this next circle to take. The big thing to keep an eye on right now is low ground flanks. That's going to yeah. be a big position, specifically over towards Lazarus. Everybody knows where Lazarus is at and that they have the circle. So a lot of these teams are trying to move around, get different sightlines back over towards it. We talked about Lazarus. They're kind of open where they're at. But the benefit of being open to everybody else's sightlines is you have sightlines on them as well. Yes. So it's a matter of how Lazarus can capitalize on this point. Can they deny Envy pushing up this hillside? Can they deny Vanquish going for a reposition? The only thing that keeps Lazarus from, from being able to do that freely are the rumblings. Rumblers are not in the circle, but Lazarus know that they are there. And so they need to make sure that they basically take them out, take that high ground, granted weakened uh, team on the high ground out of this before they can focus on the south of the circle. And the Rumblers, they're playing it safe right now. They're not going gung-ho, just rushing in, but Roth. Roth has a very interesting angle. Moody's going to go ahead the and the UAZ. Is it gonna, uh, I think he's going to be a little too short. From it, so that's going to reveal that somebody's at least around them. So Envy's going to be able to get over towards the edge. Looks like Vanquish did hop into vehicles and do a similar move. You have the one crate that's down. You got Envy that's right next to it. But Lazarus still kind of carving out. Finally, the Rumblers are going to take a couple of shots, but it's going to be back down towards Vanquish. <sighs> he should have hit the more of those shots. That was a missed opportunity for Micro Fry and the rest of the Rumblers. Granted, they still have a strong position. They're able to make their way inside the circle. And Pride going down. That's, oh, that's definitely going to make it hard for Envy. Great shots coming up from Luke. He's going to be able to hold that angle for quite a while now as he's looking back down towards him. Envy's trying to figure out, okay, what do we do? Not quite fully inside the safe zone. I think that UAZ might have stopped just on the outside of it, and Luke is just lining up some damage. Lazarus, still a strong position. Five kills as well. They're keeping Envy in a rough spot. Envy aren't even in the circle, actually. They're just barely, I think yeah, I, maybe I don't Moody think is like in. just barely inside, but that's not a holdable position just yet. We do have rumblers that move down. You can see Party Curdy looking back over. Look at the mini map. You can see Lazarus is just trying to spread out, get more and more control. Purdy. Now Purdy making the aggressive move. You can see grenades are exploding just a little bit too far out. But Purdy's in range. This one should connect. Is it going to land right on top of him? Goes out in the blue. Going to do a little bit damage, but it's going to stall everybody from Envy. You can see the vehicle's not in play. So now it's just off of smokes. Envy has taken so much damage. Do they know that Purdy Curdy is here? He is just slow crawling right up next to them, waiting for them to move. He can capitalize so big. Now it's onto the Rumblers. If the Rumblers distract Lazarus, that could be the opening for Envy. But let's take a quick listen in on Lazarus's comms. One of Envy's, they the right front. I see that guy. I'm not going to beat him at all, so. I can see the shooting. smoke and everything. They were just bait shooting. They're burning along the ridges, not to one. Nice shot. I can flush. Almost knocked another. I'm watching yeah. that smoke. Back left is on. Kill them? Yeah, there's another That's one burning on. Still another one. There could be like I'll a moving back. Cover that guy. Cover this guy. I'm smoking back. Cover him. Is that a ghillie suit guy? Ghillie suit? By the US or? He's by the US still. I saw him switch guns by the back. US. Can't see it. Let's cover. We're covering. We're covering. Yeah, I'm running back. Dick Rumblers right now. See him? If you can. Yeah. Keep I'm covering. Looking. He's going to be forced out soon. Keep covering that guy. I'm looking. I'm look for Rumblers. I can't look. I'll He's... get shot in the back from Envy. All right, Roger. I'm watching Envy. I'm watching Envy as well. Unless you pick that guy instantly, I'm going to look Rumblers if you have that then. He's on that ridge. I'm going to look for the Rumblers. I have a shooting angle on Rumblers. I'm looking for the guy. Fuck it. That line going left. Lit. Dead. Let me dead. Focus up. Reset. Reset. Yep. Reset. Nine reset up. Goes. Careful for south. There's a guy to rock on my mark yeah. right towards me. Yep. He's running in. Dead. Oh. Zen. Okay. We got run. one rum. Who else? DQ. Knocked one. Two guys. There's two guys over here. Two guys over here. Only one up. 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 Run up with Where is he? Where is he? On the ramp, on the ramp. The nine point, the nine point. Good job. There we go. It's going to be Lazarus with 12 kills walking away with a round win and a solid performance. Man, they just owned that section of the map. Cool, calm, and collected, and it was an easy finish for Lazarus. You just heard those comms, how calm they were. That's just kind of the epitome of that team. These guys yeah. are just very, they're super organized in the way they make their approach.